she's just full of energy and uh, she has this little um, kind of an attitude that just endears you to her. Uh, it's, it's pretty funny. I was telling her out there, I said, you know, you kind of remind me of the character from uh, Meryl Streep played in The Devil Wears Prada. I said, that between that and a cross between that and Mother Teresa. <laughs> if there is such a thing. <laughs> I would find, especially if I came in during the day or in the evening, where some of the aides or staff would be, you know, maybe they'd be sitting at the table rolling silverware or something. Not that that isn't a good job, but, you know, Amy would be back with one a resident somewhere doing something. You know, I'd come in and sometimes Amy would just be in there, you know, combing her hair, you know, let's put this makeup on. And she says, it's like having my own little Barbie doll, you know. <laughs> and say, oh, okay, that's cool, you know, but she would just enjoy being with my mom. She's kind of fun doing exercises with us, and she has her kicks that she kicks. What's that, like with her legs? Can you show me one of those? What is it? Uh, she takes one leg and she goes, way up. <laughs> oh. She's a wonderful person. I came here in April and she just kind of took, I don't know, like I was a little sister or something. Mm -hmm. She never went by, but what she did, give me a hug or a kiss. Maybe she'd just wave, but she is so nice, so nice. She was like somebody I could go to and ask anything. And she always had an answer for me. She always had a hug for me. And I didn't feel like I was a stranger. She's a beautiful person. She takes to so many people. But I feel like I can ask her a question and she'll give me an answer. She calls me Julie, Julebo. I think that's a cute name. <laughs> Better than Oral. <laughs> I always went to bed knowing if something was wrong that Amy would call. You know, that he wasn't going to wait till morning and because and, um, he went downhill so quickly. And so it gave us a huge, um, made us feel very comfortable and like we'd made the right choice because Amy um, would check in on him and she'd be going down the hall to take somebody, you know, back after lunch and dad would be in his room and she'd pop her head in and, and say, how you doing coach? And, and uh, just made him feel very, very welcome. And I think the fact that dad calls this home now, um, I attribute a lot of that to, to Amy. She's certainly not a nine to five or she, she's thinking about them all, you know, yeah. people all the time. And, and um, uh, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't ask for, you know, for her to be more compassionate and kind, and it makes things that are that could be awkward or you know embarrassing for for a guy. She, she it's just a non-issue, and mm -hmm. she just breezes through it, and and, it, and it's um, it's nothing, you know, mm -hmm. and and yet that makes my dad feel so comfortable. I don't think my dad anymore feels like he has six children that he has seven. I think he he feels very close and comfortable with Amy, and. Um, and he'll uh, not hold back. He'll tell her exactly what he thinks, and and um, not afraid to ask, you know, if, you know, for something. And Amy always, always follow through. She she doesn't just say, well, you know, I'm back in a, in a you know, in a, in a half hour, 45 minutes. I got to do something. Um, she she may say that, but she's back there. And well, Amy, we just had this conversation, and there's God has reasons for everything, and I'm so glad He sent you to us because your work here in this facility uh, has made the difference in so many people's lives. You will never know it. You will never know it. So, 
good luck to you and hope you get it again next year <laughs> and the year after. Amy, I love you. And you are a wonderful, wonderful girl. Please, always stay that way.